the founder and CEO at Pure Lithium. So what we want to understand from you is what is the importance of lithium metal batteries in the field of electric vehicles and overall energy storage space? Wow, thank you for the question. Lithium metal is really the holy grail of batteries. It has the highest energy density. It has 3,860 milliamp hours of gram compared to the graphite anode and lithium ion today that has about 386, that's 10 times more. So using lithium metal, a thin pure lithium metal electrode with the correct cathode can just increase energy density by arguably 10 times. Realistically on a cell level, at least four times. You can fast charge with lithium metal and you can make large format cells as well. So instead of having you know, thousands of small cylindrical or prismatic cells in an electric vehicle, you could have a hundred in a much smaller size. So the benefits of having this higher energy density, um, lightweight battery that will extend range, it's just tremendous, which is why the research has been going on for so many years. I understand it's been decades since people are researching in this area. So what have been the major roadblocks? Why has this lithium metal anodes, why have this technology not been commercialized till date? That is the question we ponder every day. So Stan Whittingham that won the Nobel prize for the lithium ion battery, um, along with the others was originally working on lithium metal and he made a lithium metal battery with titanium disulfide and they viewed it at the Chicago auto show um, in 1976. And the problem is it, it, when it would catch on fire all the time. So that was a problem. And then lithium ion wound up being the predominant chemistry. However, that being said, the reason for the fires is not the lithium, it's the organic electrolyte that is used. So your lithium ion battery today, it's the organic that's the flammable part. Um, but you know, we, we love this battery, it has changed the world and it's inspired the entire globe to look at energy storage as a, as a realistic possibility to mitigate climate change. So best invention ever, but we, we really do need to, to do better. So the barriers to commercialization are, are, are twofold. First of all, I'm gonna talk about the supply chain. Lithium metal now is made um, by using lithium chloride as a precursor. And lithium chloride is about 3% of the overall global lithium market. Lithium metal, which doesn't exist freely in nature, you have to extract it, it's only in the form of compounds. It has very high processing costs, it's about 1% of the overall market and it sells now for between 140 to $160,000 a metric ton. The cost is prohibitive. And, and even if everyone adopted lithium metal batteries today and they were on the road, we don't have the supply chain to expand and even meet that demand, assuming we wanted to use those foils. Mm -hmm. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the chemistry is, is difficult. You need to have an electrolyte that isn't going to react with lithium metal, that isn't going to decompose it um, or cause side reactions. And, and that has been the biggest challenge. The other challenge of utilizing the capacity is the cathodes. The cathodes we use today, the positive electrode, they are highly optimized for lithium ion intercalation chemistry. So imagine a parking garage. And imagine that the cobalt basically are the, the beams that hold it up and the lithium drives in and out and finds its spot and it can only go so fast in and out of the garage. It's limited by diffusion rate. So in order to really utilize a lithium metal anode, you need to have a conversion cathode um, like, like a sulfur or a higher rate capability cathode. So those are the challenges. And if you put lithium in the wrong situation with the wrong electrolytes under the incorrect current densities, it will grow dendrites and it will puncture right through any separator in anybody's battery. Mm -hmm. And that will of course lead to a thermal runaway and fire, right? Exactly, exactly, which is, which is not acceptable. So for this to be adopted in mass, it has to be so safe. And what Pure Lithium is working to do is to make it completely safe, but also completely affordable for the entire world. Where our goal is $50 a kilowatt hour on a cell level, which is about half of lithium ion today, 
we would like to get it down to $20 if we can find the right conversion cathode. And we're, we're working very hard to do that here in our lab. Right, right, right. So I understand there are uh, a few more companies who have made great strides, at least, and they have automotive companies backing as well in solids, and they're working on solid state electrolytes, like I'm talking about like quantum scape or SES or solid power. So what is it that pure lithium does differently than these companies? Excellent question. So those, um, so first of all, th those companies are all fairly different as well. Uh, SES, um, I'm a tremendously big fan of that company. It was spun out of Don Sadaway's lab at MIT. He was an inventor on the technology and I've, I've watched it since its inception. And Chi Chow has done a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal job. He is constrained by the current supply of lithium metal um, and he uses an, uh, a solvent in salt, which is a highly concentrated salt, but there still is some solvent in, in that battery. What we do at Pure Lithium is, is two things. We make our own battery, I mean, our own lithium rather, and we do this through electrodeposition. So instead of extrusion, um, which is think of a, a Play-Doh machine almost, um, mm -hmm. you have to smush the lithium, we grow it from the surface of a piece of copper. So we can make a five micron thin film very easily. We just stop the current. It's a function of current density and time. So we build our own anode in house. We filed a lot of intellectual property around vertically integrating our own lithium metal anode production. But the big, big, big win for us is that we invented a way to use a myriad of different feedstocks. So instead of lithium chloride that I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, that's only 3% of the market and is very expensive, we can use a lithium sulfate solution that people are working on making right in the United States. We can use off-spec lithium carbonate and a lot of lithium carbonate gets thrown away if it doesn't meet super high spec. So we can also use recycled um, lithium ion batteries. We've done a lot of that work in, in our lab using some novel molten salt electrolytes that Don Sadaway has invented. So the other thing we do differently besides making our own um, anode, we also make our own polymer and we use our polymer membrane for primary lithium extraction and in a battery. So we have several of them. Um, and the beauty of this polymer is that it protects the lithium metal and it doesn't allow it to form dendrites. It, it's lithium ion selective. So it only lets lithium go through it. And it's absolutely phenomenal to use. So what we've decided to do with Pure Lithium is really work on battery development because we now have three fourths of the battery with our lithium metal anode. So we are pairing it with a molten salt electrolyte. Now don't be, think molten is not necessarily high temperature at all. Molten salt are just simply a salt that's highly conductive that doesn't have any kind of solvent in it. And they're mostly used in primary metal extractions. Um, a lot of molten salt work fell away in the 70s when the Department of Energy decided to stop funding molten salt nuclear reactor work. So it's almost kind of a, a dying art. There are not a lot of scientists that are around that actually work in molten salt. I happen to have several of them because of Don Sadaway and his former students are fairly well trained. When I began to work with Don, I did not know what a molten salt was. I mean, I knew vaguely what it was, but I had no idea the difference. And if you're using an organic electrolyte or any kind of aqueous system, the charge carrier per unit is so low and so sluggish and molten salt, they're so highly conductive. So we have one in our lab that we use for extraction um, and one in the battery. And we have the temperature down to 68 degrees and we're working on another salt uh, that melts at 13 degrees. So mm -hmm. we're very, very, very excited. These are non-flammable. So we want to debut a battery that is inherently non-flammable for electric vehicles. And we definitely have a long road ahead of us um, the largest battery we built so far is 50 milliamp hours, but it's a solid two layer full cell. We're really, really excited. Okay. Um, so the other difference, uh, so SES, it's, it's in the electrolyte, but also we make our, our own um, electrode. And the difference between us and QuantumScape, we are the absolute opposite. There's, there's completely different. So 
we are taking the cheapest form of lithium and making it into the highest value added product, which is the anode. Mm -hmm. And we're making that first, and then we're putting the rest of the battery together. And guess what? We're done in like 15 minutes. And this is just at a lab scale. When you make a lithium ion battery, you have between one and a half and three weeks of what are called formation cycles. And that's sending the lithium, it's all in the cathode over to the anode and that has to be done in situ. So lithium metal, you can turn product a lot faster. What QuantumScape does is they take the lithium out of the cathode and then they deposit it onto the anode very similarly to the lithium ion battery. It takes a substantial amount of time and you can't delithiate these cathodes all the way. They need to have lithium in them or the structure will collapse. So they're using the most expensive form of lithium and it's much more difficult to actually form a lithium metal electrode that way. So we're, we're completely, we, we could not be farther apart from, from QuantumScape. And again, we use liquids but we do not use flammable liquids. That's our big differential. Right, so recently what we've seen is lithium metal batteries have sort of become synonymous with solid state that says that the electrolyte has to be a solid. So you're saying that doesn't have to be the case. Absolutely, and we are working very hard to correct that narrative. Absolutely, the metric should be flammable versus non-flammable. It is incredibly difficult to move atoms through solid materials and no one has done it yet. SES is the leader in the space. They stopped being a completely solid company with the polymer and, and it's a great polymer, but it just works better. You have to have something to wet that interface with a cathode. So our molten salt is wonderful because it gets in every crevice of it. But if you don't have something between the solid and the cathode, it doesn't matter. You can have the world's best anode and nothing is gonna happen for you. Right, 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 absolutely. So in terms of technology readiness, if you could explain where you are and what uh, kind of uh, timeline do you see your, yourself for getting to the market? Thank you. We're on a very aggressive roadmap at Pure Lithium to um, make batteries that are three amp hours, so about the size of a cell phone battery in mm -hmm. two years, uh, multi-layer batteries at scale. So it's taken, for example, Solid Power publicly disclosed that it took them seven years and about $43 million to get to that phase. We're going to do in two really, really quickly here, making all of our own lithium and all of our own polymers. And when we hit that stage, we're going to decide what our path to market is going to be. We are going to aim to make 100 milliamp hour cells ourselves. Um, it's unclear to us if we're going to license or manufacture. My goal as CEO is to deploy the technology as fast as humanly possible. Okay. And could you also tell us a little bit about the leadership team at Pure Lithium, what their backgrounds are? Absolutely, thank you. So I chose Donald Sadoway as my co-founder um, for several good reasons. So Don is a MIT professor, um, material science and engineering, and he's been there for 41 years. He has a track record of introducing new chemistry. So he has a company called Ambry, which is the liquid metal battery founded out of his lab. Um, one of the inventors of that original technology, Paul Burke is our CTO here at Pure Lithium. And that battery is a brand new chemistry that works tremendously well. Um, and Reliance um, in India invested over $50 million in it. Um, just as important to the rest of the team as our commercialization officer, Ralph Wise. And he has a ton of industry experience. Uh, he worked at BASF and Ultralife. He brought lithium metal batteries to market for the military applications. And he also worked at SES. And he has an incredible business acumen. Um, he is the king of cost modeling. He is going to be instrumental in, in helping us reach this goal of getting to $20 a kilowatt hour.